Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Zenith Defy Classic. This watch is available from Chronix.com for €6,420. You can purchase the watch from Chronix.com online or alternatively in person at their boutiques. All their watches are Chronix certified original by their in-house watchmakers and all their watches are covered by the Chronix 24 month warranty. So firstly let's look at the box that the watch comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the Zenith Defy Classic comes in this matte black cardboard outer watch box. One removes the lid to it, pulls down the flap and the watch box itself is protected by this foam panel so I'll remove the watch box and show it to you in detail. So this is the watch box itself and as you can see very well executed, finished to a high standard one presses the button and that releases the lock on the lid. Good quality stainless steel hardware throughout and very nice presentation. One pulls up the panel and that really shows the watch box itself. Now one detail I really like is the padded pillow cushion sits within a travel case. It's an innovative design because one can fold up the sides of the cushion and as you can see it folds into a travel case one can use. And I really like this uh, cuboid style travel case watch box. Zenith deserve full credit for coming up with an original design. The presentation is outstanding and also it's good to have a travel case one can use when traveling. So with regards to the other items, one also gets this Zenith branded microfiber polishing cloth. It's always nice to receive a branded microfiber polishing cloth irrespective of the price point of a piece. Now in the base of the outer watch box, is the owner's instruction manual and they've crafted a quick set guide with clear concise diagrams and instructions in English and as you can see on the reverse it has the brand motto time to reach your star so very useful read for unfamiliar with the uh, Zenith Defy Classic and the movement use which is the Caliber Elite 670 SK one also gets this leather tag and inside is the barcode and reference number of the piece and lastly, one also gets this leather wallet, which has the plastic warranty card for the piece. And on the reverse, there is also other slots to fit credit cards in. So very nice presentation. And immediately one gets the impression that this is a high tier piece, which fully justifies its price point at €6,420. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Zenith Defy Classic. This is a brand new unworn 2021 piece. 41 millimeter case diameter. We have a 45.1 millimeter lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 10.8 millimeters, and the lug width is 22 millimeters to the integrated bracelet. The integrated bracelet tapers from 22 millimeters at the lugs down to the two button push deployment clasp. As you can see, it is signed to a high standard, beautifully engraved with the Zenith Star brand emblem and also Zenith. Good firm resistance to the two button push triggers. So the head of the piece and the bracelet are entirely made from titanium, but the two button push deployment is made from stainless steel. And if you look closely, you can see it has stainless steel engraved. So that's the first thing that's noticeable about the Zenith Defy Classic, the lack of heft. Although this is a 41 millimeter, it only weighs 106 grams. Normally I would expect a 41 millimeter piece to weigh circa 150 grams. So it is about 50 grams lighter than a stainless steel version would be. So that's something I really like about it, the lack of heft, because the watch feels invisible. It feels weightless on wrist. Sapphire crystal with double AR coating. So it has AR coating on the top side and the underside. And as you can see, the double AR coating is just outstanding. This is some of the best anti-reflective coating I have ever seen on a watch. It really does an excellent job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver applied indices and the silver baton hands, as you can see. So the AA coating is just incredible. It's clear, there's no tint to it, and it is highly effective, some of the best I've ever seen. Skeletonized dial, as you can see, perfect symmetry to the applied indices, and I like the silver applied Zenith star, which complements the counterweight on the sweeping second hand, which is also a Zenith star. So they've done a good job with the skeletonized dial execution. If you look closely at the six o'clock position, you will also see that this is a date complication piece. Now, minor criticism of the Defy Classic, I think that they should have made the date wheel white with either red or black Arabic numerals in order to make it more legible. The date complication seems undersized. It's actually difficult to read 
the Arabic numerals on the date wheel because they have a silver tone to the date wheel, which doesn't really contrast very well with the black Arabic numerals. I think a white date wheel would have been more legible, and they could have also scaled up the proportions of the numerals and the date wheel itself to make it more legible. So it does take some getting used to to read the dates, although one can read it. Now, with regards to the crown, we can see it's knurled, finish, and signed with the zenith star emblem, as you can see, embossed, mirror polished to a flawless finish. Now, I really like the case finishing to the titanium head of the piece and also the integrated bracelet. This is some of the best case finishing I have ever seen on a watch. And bear in mind, titanium is a difficult material to work in. It's much harder to machine and polish than stainless steel, such as 316L grade stainless steel, which is a popular choice. But they've managed to mirror polish it to the same high level of mirror polishing that one would get with 316L grade stainless steel or alternatively 904L stainless steel. It's just incredible. I like the large chamfers machined on the top edge of the case and the ends of the lugs. They're absolutely gorgeous to look at and they complement the flawless mirror polishing to the bezel. So the bezel case are all made from titanium and the bracelet is entirely made from titanium with the exception of the stainless steel two button push deployment as I've discussed. Just look at the luster of the titanium. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It has a more grey matte finish to it rather than the silver tone of the luster of 316L grade stainless steel and it's just very eye-catching. The kind of finishing level that one is getting with this Defy Classic is Holy Trinity level and when I say Holy Trinity I'm referring to Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet and Vacheron Constantin. This is the very best of finishing I have seen on a watch which is very unusual at this price point. Yes it is a high tier piece at €6,420 but it's the kind of finishing one would expect to see on a Patek Philippe Nautilus or an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, for example. So it's just incredible. The luster, the finishing, the mirror polishing to the links is just sublime. So let's test the crown action. Now, push it's a push-pull crown rather than a screw-down crown. So in the closed position, one can manually wind it to top up the Calibre Elite 670SK movement to its maximum 50 hours. Good for our resistance to it. It feels silky smooth but it's an absolute pleasure to feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up when one manually winds it. Very delicate action to it. The clicks are very light. So pulling it out to the first click position is the quick set date complication. As you can see, if you look closely at the six o'clock position, you can see it has a quick set date complication. Now, interestingly, there's no back play. One can rotate it anti-clockwise or clockwise to use the quick set complication. It works equally in both directions, and that is a credit to Zenith. It's something they do very well. The quick set date complications work both clockwise and anti clockwise equally, no back play whatsoever. It's a very well executed quick set date complication. Pulling it out to the second click, it's a nice delicate click. That is the time setting position, and it is absolutely silky smooth. The quality of Zenith movements really are equal in quality to Rolex. They are absolutely gorgeous. The, the feeling is just silky smooth. It just feels so smooth to operate. No resistance whatsoever to the hands. No friction in the gearing whatsoever. It's just a very smooth movement to use. As you can see, it has hacking. I've now hacked the second hand dead. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click which restarts the movement. So. The crown is very well executed. It provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters of water resistance, which is perfectly acceptable for a daily wear piece. Now, looking at the screw down exhibition case back, it's another one of my favorite features. As you can see, brass satin finishing to the titanium exhibition case back, glazed with sapphire crystal. And as you can see, the movement is finished to perfection. One of my favorite aspects of the Caliber Elite 670 SK is the star rotor, as you can see. It, they've skeletonized the rotor and they've used their star emblem, which is integrated into the design. It's one of the best finished rotors I've ever seen on a watch. The detail is incredible, the finishing is incredible. It's a skeletonized movement and they've done an incredible job of skeletonizing the bridges and also finishing them in terms of the machining, the polishing, the deburring and the chamfering. It's just absolutely gorgeous to look at. It's a technically excellent movement and it really is worthy of having the sapphire crystal glazed exhibition case back to show it off. The rotor itself is a work of art and again this is the kind of uh, rotor finishing one would expect to see on a Holy Trinity piece rather than a high tier piece costing only €6,420. I would expect this kind of detail to be on a watch costing in excess of €15,000, so it's just incredible. 
Now I'll give you a wrist shot and it is a tight fit to get on my 8 inch wrist so I'm just going to have to remove my glove. But I'm pleased to report that it does fit my 8 inch wrist to perfection. I haven't sized the bracelet and as you can see it fits my 8 inch wrist perfectly. The detail of the engraving on the two button push to point is perfect. Uh, the luster to the links is just incredible. I love the way it catches the light. One thing I really like about it, and it became immediately apparent, is the snug fit to wrist. If you look at the integrated bracelet, it actually has a curved profile to it. It has a convex profile to the top edge of it. It curves into the lugs of the wrist, uh, into the lugs of the head of the piece. It curves against the wrist. As you can see, it's not flat and straight. The articulation of the H-Link bracelet is just incredible. No gap underneath the angular case, which is almost brutalist in design. It's got a ball house feeling to the design. It reminds me of Gerald Genta's design of the Royal Oak, or alternatively the Nautilus. I love that squared off profile to the Brutalist lugs. Just absolutely gorgeous. Very snug fit to the wrist. Now one thing I really like about it is the relatively short lug to lug measurement of only 45.1. As you'll know from my previous reviews, I consider 48mm to be the sweet spot. So it may come as a surprise that I really like this 45.1mm lug to lug measurement because it gives an incredibly snug fit to the wrist. This is one of the lowest profile watches I have reviewed on my channel. It is only 10.8mm thick. So just to put that into perspective, I consider 13 millimeters to be the sweet spot for dive pieces for example to get an automatic powered piece at only 10.8 millimeters really is a credit to zenith they've made the zenith defy classic a very thin and low profile piece it's the kind of thickness one would expect to see with a quartz piece alternatively a manually a manually wound piece with no rotor on the underside of the movement so to get an automatic that is only 10.8 is very impressive 22mm lug width perfectly balances the 41mm head of the piece and the taper on the H-Link integrated bracelet is just done to perfection. They've got the proportions just done to perfection. Absolutely beautiful. It's just sublime when one looks at the low profile head of the piece, flat sapphire crystal and the mirror polished bezel. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely love it. 106 grams. It feels completely weightless. It really feels like an invisible watch. Easily uh, slips underneath a shirt cuff if you wear a business shirt, so an ideal piece to wear. Now, I thought that the skeletonized dial and hands would take some getting used to, um, but it's actually surprisingly easy to read because they're silver and applied. And the silver applied indices and the baton style hands, they really do contrast very well with the matte silver skeletonized bridges of the dial and the uh, bridges of the movement. So it's actually easy to read. The only criticism I have is the date complication is more difficult to read at six o'clock because it has a matte silver finish to it rather than being white and black. Very good looking piece. Feel good factor is outstanding. Comfort level is outstanding. And I like the uh, action to the two button push deployment, which is stainless steel good positive clicks and I like the firm two button push spring loaded triggers to it. It really does feel good. It feels solid. It's got a nice crisp click to it. So it's not going to accidentally come undone. So just bear with me. I'm going to put my glove back on and then I'll continue with a loom test. Now I've got high expectations of the quality of the loom used because it's clear that Zenith haven't cut any corners with regards to specification. It has double AR coating for example which is excellent. Right, so as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to its absolute maximum. Right, so that's now fully charged, and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This is C3 Superluminova, beautiful green tone to it. As you'll know from my previous reviews, C3 Superluminova is a personal favourite of mine, and one can easily see why. It's got the characteristic green tone of C3, which is like tritium. Absolutely beautiful to look at. Although the hands are baton style hands, they have applied good thick layers of uh, loom plots and also the applied indices, despite being a skeletonized dial. I love the symmetry of the applied indices, only the six o'clock index is slightly shorter to accommodate the date complication. It's glowing brightly and it's continuing to glow for a good length of time. This is what 10 out of 10 top grade Superluminova performance looks like. Zenith deserve full credit for not cutting corners. It is just incredible. I absolutely love it. So clearly legible, good symmetry, good orientation to the dial. It cannot be faulted. Right, so let's discuss the movement used because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. So the Zenith Defy Classic uses the Calibre Elite 670SK. 
It's a reliable, well-proven movement. This is the skeletonized version of the Calibre 670. The Calibre Elite 670SK has been in use since 2018, so it is well proven. 27 joules, it runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 Hz. 50 hour power reserve is very good. Hand winding and hacking are useful complications and it also has a date complication as I've discussed. So I'll explain the basis of the Calibre Elite 670SK. It's, based, it's an updated version of the Calibre 670, which in itself was a technically excellent movement, but the most notable difference between the Calibre 670 and its successor, the Calibre Elite 670SK, is the introduction of a silicon pallet fork and silicon escape wheel. So that makes it lower friction and also highly anti-magnetic, so they are useful innovations. So it's an accurate movement, the build quality is outstanding, the quality control is outstanding, the power reserve is good at 50 hours, really it is a movement without any negatives whatsoever. Uh, I like everything about it and as you'll know from my previous reviews, I like movements that run at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. And the reason is they give a nice characteristic smooth sweep to the second hand. With movements that run at 3 hertz and 21,600 vibrations per hour, they have a stutter or a judder to the second hand, which I dislike. I like the smooth sweep of a 4 hertz movement. I also regard 4 hertz to be perfection in terms of it's the ideal compromise between power reserve and accuracy. Inevitably, if one increases power reserve, one sacrifices accuracy. And if one increases accuracy, inevitably one reduces power reserve. So one has to strike a balance between the two. And I regard 4 hertz to be the perfect balance. Running a movement at 28,800 vibrations per hour gives chronometer grade accuracy, but it also gives um, good power reserve, such as this, with 50 hours of power reserve. So accurate, reliable, well proven, in use since 2018, no negatives whatsoever. It's just a very good movement and I like the fact it uses the silicon pallet lever and escape wheel to make it more anti-magnetic and lower friction. So lastly I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch will meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price points. At €6,420 this is unquestionably excellent quality and unquestionably excellent value. This watch would be excellent quality and value if it were €15,000. One is getting Holy Trinity level build quality, quality control and finishing including the materials. The quality of the head of the piece in terms of the finishing is just incredible, bearing in mind it's made from titanium not stainless steel. The quality of the bracelet finishing is just incredible. As I've discussed, this is the kind of finishing one would expect to see on the head of the piece and the bracelet of a Patek Philippe Nautilus or alternatively an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. That is the level we're talking about. And Zenith deserve full credit because they are producing Holy Trinity level pieces like this Zenith Defy Classic, but at a significantly lower price point within the high tier of only €6,420. The value proposition is incredible and really this has won me over because it's the first titanium watch I've reviewed on my channel and I was immediately struck by my favourite aspect which is the lack of heft. It's 41mm but it only weighs 106 grams. If you're looking for a daily wear piece that feels invisible on wrists, incredibly comfortable to wear, completely weightless, this is it personified. The other thing I really like about it is the fact it's very thin at only 10.8mm. So Overall, Zenith have created a masterpiece in the Defy Classic. This is one of the greatest Zenith watches ever made, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. It looks futuristic with the skeletonized dial, and it's just an absolutely gorgeous piece. So I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Zenith Defy Classic. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.